Hello everyone, and my name is Aura, and welcome to the 15th develop of Mortal Glory 2, a turn-based gladiator roguelike. This week I started with a bunch of bug fixes, basically going through a long list that I had accumulated over several devlogs and just one by one squashing them. It's not too interesting to talk about, but one thing that came out of this uh, basically for testing purposes, I added this resurrection skill that should be a very fun addition to the game. So I actually added the animation for this quite a while back. So just a dead animation but in reverse. So now I just had to add the logic behind it, like who you can target it with and all the like handling all the edge cases related to that. Then next I decided to revisit an old feature and that was the line of sight feature. So basically I showcased it in a devlog quite a while back and while I was reading through the comments and kind of thinking about alternative approaches I realized that my line of sight code was actually kind of faulty and it looked okay but uh, in many situations the like actual results weren't accurate and this showcased uh, best with long range skills so what I was doing was that for example if you have a magic missile that can reach like a uh, 10 tile range uh, what I did was I checked a line from the caster to the like end coordinate of the uh, range. So basically it checked like a square box uh, with a range of 10. And back then I thought that this would be enough because the results look like that. But I realized that of course like if you then check a line, uh, for example the length is 9 tiles and it's like one tile below the like vector of the like 10 tile uh, line. Well, that can then have different results uh, in the actual game, like what tiles are actually reachable and what are not. So yeah, I got back to the design table and entered this rabbit hole of <laughs> line of sight code. So I realized that this is by no means a solved problem with games. There are several different algorithms that are used, some more simple and some more complex. I wanted something fairly simple, so I didn't dive into the deep end of taking like the most complex and most like complete and accurate one. And basically it all comes down to a design choice. Uh, like what do you want to prioritize? And I realized that my earlier code, it was okay, but it was kind of too lax, uh, like very good target. So there were many situations where a unit was behind a pillar, but you could easily reach it from long range. What I actually tried to focus on was exactly the pillars on the map. So for example, yeah, if you have a pillar and you are behind it, I wanted to try and make it as intuitive as possible, like at which position you could avoid being targeted with skills. It's still not perfect, but it should be better than what I had previously. All this work with line of sight uh, made me also notice one issue that is actually not uncommon with these line of sight algorithms, and that was asymmetry. So basically if you have a tile on the map that blocks line of sight, uh, with some algorithms, if you don't account for this, you can have a situation where a unit is behind a pillar and can just reach a, like a target on the other side of the pillar. But then without moving the units, it comes a turn of the another unit uh, who then tries to use a skill and realize that he or she cannot actually target the 
other unit, uh, while the other unit could target uh, the one. So, uh, so that's what the asymmetry is about, and I felt like <laughs> that's really unfun. In some games, it might not be such an issue, but I mean, if one of my players faces this issue, I can already imagine the frustration they have when and complaining on the forums <laughs> and all that if that happens to them. So, yeah, that's why I wanted to fix. And basically, fixing this was very easy. So, for example, if you have a vertical check, like kind of a line like this, previously I just checked like from A unit to B unit, but what I'm doing now is that I always have the check in the same direction. So, for example, the y-axis uh, increases all, always in the check. I mean like the y-coordinate, so it's always up. Even if, if you have a unit at the top of the map targeting someone at the bottom of the map, the check is always from the bottom to the top, so yeah, that basically makes it symmetrical. After I fixed that, I noticed that while now it was fair that, okay, if two units are uh, around the pillar, if one cannot target another, then the other also cannot target the other unit. But <clears throat> if we take a symmetrical situation, like uh, this is hard to describe, but <clears throat> basically, if you have the identical situation around a pillar, but it's the mirror image, that can still be asymmetrical. So for example, from the bottom, maybe you can target like two tiles upwards uh, in one angle. Then from the top to the bottom, it might actually only be one tile. So basically, while the previous fix made it fair between two units, uh, this other problem is an issue. Uh, for example, if the other team starts at the top and in my game, the player always starts at the bottom, so yeah, basically it was an issue I also wanted to fix. And the simple fix for that actually was that now when I have this line of sight checks, I always do it twice. So it checks the bottom to top and then the exact same angle from top to bottom. So like a mirror image. And then basically I can decide if I want it to be lax, I can just say that okay, just one of those needs to like succeed. Or if I want to be more strict, then yeah, both of those have to succeed. So yeah, with those two fixes, I had solved the symmetry problem with my line of sight. Then I knocked out a few quality of life fixes out of my list. So first of all, now I visualize which skill is selected, which is nice. Then I enabled ESC to cancel the selection. And then I also made keyboard shortcuts for the skills. So basically I want to enable playing the game with just keyboard, at least playing through a majority of the gameplay with just a keyboard. So yeah, that's, that's nice and then then I also made it so that uh, if you activate a skill with keyboard, uh, I want it to automatically select the nearest viable target. So basically, that just makes the gameplay a bit smoother if you're playing with a keyboard. With mouse, it's not too bad because you're always moving the mouse so much on screen it's fast, but with keyboard, it can be a pain if the targeting always starts, for example, in your own square, then you always need to click many times to get to a target, but with automatic, it can often be the right choice immediately, so it just speeds up the gameplay. Then next I got back to the battle preview window and the reward section especially. So what I had before was that uh, I showed the exact rewards you will get from the battle as like item specific, so this sword, uh, this armor, this potion, and so on. So how I adjusted it was that now I will just show the like 
uh, chest, you will get the quality level, level of that. And then maybe if you have some like extra rewards that are specific, then I will show those. But yeah, I figured it would be fun to <laughs> kind of cloud the exact rewards in the mystery of the chest. So yeah, you will have an more exciting time after the fight is over to see what actually you will get from the chest. Then next I got back into adding some quality of life adjustments to the game. First of all I added this, uh, what could I call it, like helper uh, area <laughs> visualization. For example with my Fire Nova skill that I added recently, now it will actually show the like range of two, the range of effect, while previously you could only uh, see it targeting yourself and then kind of like calculate like where it will actually reach. And then I also added this toggleable uh, grid outlines visual. So yeah, yeah, same thing I had in Mortal Glory 1, basically to make it easier for you to see uh, where the like tile lines actually go and help with estimating ranges. Then for strictly <laughs> testing purposes, I added two new skills into the game. So first of all, this meteor skill. So basically, have a giant fireball come down from the skies and rain fire all over your enemies. And then I add a normal <laughs> fireball. So launch a burning ball of fire at your enemy. And that also has an AO effect. So yeah, deal damage to the target and then also make the ground around the target burn. For these two skills, I also had to make some adjustments, uh, how the damage estimation is visualized to make it really clear like who will be damaged and how much the previous code I had for that uh, didn't really work for AOE. So yeah, after that I decided to jump into a completely new feature and that was the combat lock. I had the same feature in Mortal Glory 1, but this time I decided to implement it a bit differently, so yeah, I started from scratch and the first thing I did was basically just to have this box where I will show uh, lines of text and the necessary requirement also will be to have it be scrollable and automatically like uh, sticking to the bottom if you don't move the scroll bar. After I had the basics down, I moved into like displaying some actual like interesting data there. So showing the names, the damages, the skill names. I decided that unlike in the first one, I will try to avoid full sentences in the combat log. So instead of saying that, okay, uh, like the Minotaur launched a fireball at the Dwarf or something like that, dealing X damage and having a Y effect. I will just show the name, then an arrow perhaps to a skill name and then an arrow to the target. And why I'm doing it like this basically has two reasons. First of all, I think it's more readable when it's not a block of text. So like having symbols in there and like showing all the relevant data, that makes it more readable. And then to it's easier to localize if I don't need to have like these full sentences to actually translate and then be worried about like how much space it will take in different languages and yeah, all that. For readability, I also had this idea that I could group the texts into like blocks of text. Uh, I considered having like a colored background for that purpose, but then I figured uh, in a new block of text, the first one will be shown normally, normally, but then all the like child lines below that will have a margin. So that will make it easier to like immediately notice which line actually like 
uh, is related to a skill use. For example, you launch a fireball at an enemy, it will deal damage, it will spawn flames, the flames will deal damage. So all those will be grouped together, so it's easier to like instantly know this, what is what. My next step was basically try to improve everything. So yeah, I improved the colors, I fixed some bugs, I improved the grouping of the text, then I replaced my placeholder names with some actual names that I took straight from the first game. And yeah, basically I tried to finalize everything and make everything look better that I could. I also considered if I should replace the names with some like character symbols, but I decided not to go with that route. I mean, in a sense, it can be quicker to read and to get an idea, but then I thought I would have to add some tooltips prob probably to the icons because if there are two, uh, two same races in your team in a certain situation, then you don't know which is which. And, and then I also thought that, okay, maybe having too many symbols in the log will make it look kind of funny. So yeah, I think I'm gonna mainly stick with text and then just have some symbols in between. And hey, that's actually everything I have to show in this devlog. So, as per usual, I would love to hear what you think about all the stuff I did this week and if you have any comments, feedback, all the stuff, I would love to hear. But yeah, hey, otherwise, I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.